Hey, this is Adam Driscoll, and today we are going to be looking at PowerShell Crescendo. So Crescendo is a PowerShell module for generating PowerShell commands um, based on native binaries and that kind of thing. So you can think of, you know, wrapping IP config or something like that in a commandlet. So um, what we're going to look at today is I have a couple of sys internal tools. I have logon sessions and PS exec here. So logon sessions list logon sessions. So if I were to actually pop in here, run that, you'll see that here's the logon sessions on my machine. And then PS exec is used for actually starting um, processes on remote systems or local systems uh, kind of as system. So you can just kind of launch other um, other executables with it and that kind of thing. And it works against remote machines and that kind of stuff. So we're actually going to create some um, PowerShell commandlets around these executables. So first of all, let's generate the JSON that is required to kind of define our, um, our Crescendo commandlet. So I have the Crescendo module installed, and it, it comes with a couple uh, commandlets for generating these JSON files. So let's do that first. And we're going to get started with logon session first. So um, this is kind of an example of a configuration that generates a Crescendo JSON file. Um, I'm creating a new configuration. I'm setting the schema to the uh, Crescendo schema. I'm creating a commands array. Um, and then I'm setting up a new Crescendo command. So um, you can use the new Crescendo command commandlet to do that. And uh, in this instance, I'm using uh, verb get, uh, noun, logon session, and the original name, which is the um, executable to launch is logon session.exe. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that goes in this JSON file, which we will look at in just a second. So if I run this, um, it's going to turn that hash table into uh, a JSON file for me. And let's pop open that. And now you can see we have this JSON file uh, based on um, that new crescendo command. So we have uh, the schema set. So that's important because it provides IntelliSense. So um, it's nice to have that in there because you'll see as I'm typing, it's actually going to provide IntelliSense. So for example, this command only works on Windows. If I were to hit um, the control space for IntelliSense, it's going to pop up and provide that uh, IntelliSense for the platform. So let's kind of look through uh, some of the features of this JSON file. So we have a verb, a noun, obviously the verb and noun for our commandlet, um, the original name, so that's the uh, native command we're going to call, uh, original command elements. This is actually uh, attribute or uh, arguments we want to pass to logon sessions every time we run the command. So for example, uh, with logon sessions, there's a banner shown and we need to accept the EULA. So we can include those directly in here. Uh, to remove the banner and accept the EULA. So if I were to actually run logon sessions, I could say no banner. And now at the top, it shouldn't have a banner. Right, so you can see it just does the output. And uh, yeah, I've already accepted the EULA and that's why I don't have to do it again. Um, there's other things like aliases, the default parameter set name, um, whether or not it should support should process. Um, you can put the description of the commandlet in here, examples, so you can have like help-based things. Um, and uh, finally, you have output handlers. So one thing with, um, you know, most native commands is they output strings. So you can actually include output handlers to handle the output of uh, these native commands. So for logon session, um, I am going to define an output handler. And again, I get IntelliSense in here. So if I hit Control uh, Space, you'll see that I can select these things. Um, I am going to do handler. I'm going to do a handler type, which I'm going to do inline. But you can also do functions and scripts, so like external files. And I'm going to set the parameter set name to default. Um, now to actually like handle the output of uh, logon sessions, what you need to do is, this is you can consider this as like a script block and arg zero will actually include the, um, the output of that particular command. And in this case, uh, 
logon sessions actually supports um, CSVs. So I can output as CSV from logon session. And I just need to include that here. I gotta remember what that command is. So I can get the help. And you can see if I do a dash C, it's gonna um, print it out as CSV. So if I include that in my original command elements, um, now I have it outputting at CSV. So next, now that I have like my JSON configured, I can generate a crescendo module. So I could have one or more commands in here. I just have one command. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'll pop into a new terminal here. Um, and I'm going to call export crescendo module. I'm specifying the configuration file. So I actually don't want to use PS exec one yet. I am going to do uh, logon session dot json. Um, the module name is going to be logon session. And uh, if I hit enter on that, what you'll see is it actually generates a um, module for me. So I have the PSD one that's been generated. It you know fills in some default information, and then um, it even includes you know the command for the function to export for my get logon session. And then I have uh, this logon session .ps m1. So um, inside here, you can see it's just an auto-generated commandlet based on that JSON. And, you know, it even includes like help and stuff from the commandlet or the native app. And if I were to actually import this module, so if I do import uh, module, uh, oops, I want to do logon session.psd1. And now if I do get logon session, should have get logon session. Uh, you can see here that it ran that native command. And what's cool about this is that it actually created objects because I had that output handler. And it took that CSV and returned um, these logon sessions. So if I wanted to, for example, just get the SID from those logon sessions, I actually can access those variables. So uh, in that way, it's really cool. It you know generated this PowerShell module and wrapped this uh, this logon session exe and output objects with just uh, some tweaks to that JSON file. So let's look at another example. Um, this is going to be um, based on PS exec. So with PS exec, it has some things that we want to um, include or as parameters. So um, obviously we need to pass in you know, the XE we want to launch, potentially the computer name we want to launch. Um, and then I'll include another property for running a system. So again, we're going to create a new script dot, or a new configuration based on this new crescendo command. I'm going to call this start PS exec. Uh, again, I'm including the schema and I'm setting the original name to PS exec. So let's run that guy. And now I have a JSON file for PS exec. Um, here you can see that it's set PS exec as my original name. Uh, again, this only works on Windows because it's a Windows sys internal tool. Um, and uh, it's just default. So in this case, I'm not going to worry about the output handlers. Uh, if you leave it as default, it's just going to output as strings. Um, and what I want to uh, tweak in this example is uh, the param or are the parameters for this command. So with PS exec, uh, let's look at the help for that. We do PS exec. Like this, oops, do a little like that. You can see that uh, it has a bunch of parameters. Um, we're going to specify the computer names, a file if we want to specify that. We're going to specify a command to run, and then we're going to specify arguments for the command. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can specify. Uh, it also accepts the um, accept EULA and no banner um, parameters that logon session had. So let's add some of this stuff. So I am going to open this. Our original command elements are going to be uh, except EULA and no banner. But um, I want to make it so that I can pass in additional parameters. And that's where you put it in this parameters block. So this is actually going to generate PowerShell parameters. And you can see here that there's a bunch of like options you can provide for these parameters. Um, the original things are like what we are going to be passing into um, the the original XE, 
and then all the other like configuration options are like things for um you know powershell like uh, is it mandatory you know does it take value from pipeline what's the position of it and that kind of thing so let's actually add some parameters here i'm just looking at my notes all right um the first parameter I'm going to add is for uh, computers. So computer doesn't actually have like a parameter name on PS exec. It's just like a positional thing. So I want to put that in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do parameter type. And that's just a string. So we're going to accept a string for that. The original position, if I can get some italic sets here. Original position is zero. So if we look at how PS exec works, like this is the zeroth position is uh, the computer name. And then I want to name it computer name. So that it will generate a computer name parameter on my start ps exec commandlet. Uh, the next one I want to generate is a um, command. So we're going to say, uh, oops, parameter type is this string again. And the original position of this is one. So we have a bunch of stuff in between there, but it's positional parameter at the end for the command. And we're just going to name it command. Then we'll add arguments, whoops, which is going to be the same as these. So I won't type that again. We're going to bump the parameter or the position. And we're going to say arguments. And finally, I'm going to add a switch parameter just um, so that we can show how to do one of these. So let's actually grab the uh, system account one. So you do dash S. So what I can do there is uh, parameter type. And we're going to do switch. Um, we don't have to set the original position. Uh, we can set the name, though. And we're going to call it system. And then the one thing we do need to set is the original text, or original name, I mean, uh, is dash s. So if we want to do system, uh, we're going to specify switch on our commandlet, but it's actually going to translate to dash s for ps exec. All right, so now let's go ahead and generate our module. So uh, just like I did with um, the previous one, let's open up our terminal. Should have actually it was in here. So yeah, we'll do that. Oops, we'll do that here. And I am going to generate a PS exec module. So we'll take that PS exec. And now when we go look at our folder here, we'll have a PS exec module, and you can see it generated this start PS exec commandlet, and it has the parameters that I defined. So it has computer name, command, arguments, and system. So now if I come in here and should be able to import um, psexec.psd1, and now I have start.psexec, and I can do command notepad. And you can see it executed psexec. Um, it's actually waiting still because it's still running, um, and we could add additional commandlets for that or parameters for that, and it ran Notepad. So uh, that actually was run with PS Exec, and it you know uh, took all the parameters that we defined, and even the um, kind of the original parameters which uh, were defined up here, and ran PS Exec. And I didn't really need to know that much about PS Exec, and it's more discoverable this way, obviously. So um, with Start PS Exec now. I get IntelliSense, and I can see the parameters. It actually uh, auto-generates some help. So you can see that we're going to get like start PS exec, and then we can see the arguments. And you can actually add help into that JSON file and that kind of thing. So uh, Crescendo is a really cool way to kind of generate um, PowerShell modules around native commands. So definitely check it out. Um, and uh, I'd be real curious to see uh, kind of some Crescendo modules coming up. And what's cool about Crescendo is uh, it doesn't require Crescendo being installed. It generates modules that work by themselves. So you can see here that we have um, pretty much just a PSM1 file that's standalone. And then you could ship this 
uh, maybe along with your XE in this case or something, um, and provide a cool PowerShell experience for your native commands. So uh, if you like videos like this, definitely subscribe to my channel for uh, more cool content.